Hi everyone, Adam Levine here. Welcome to the Adam Loves Guitar channel. Hey everybody. Welcome to First Date with My Guitar. Or should I say First Date with, with Your Guitar. And I'm very excited that you're here with me to, to learn about the guitar and, and how it works. Uh, you probably just bought your first guitar and you're raring to go to learn how to play and make music on it. Maybe you had a guitar sitting around in a closet somewhere and you said, I'm going to learn how to, how to play that thing. And this is the day. This lesson has a fantastic PDF that helps illustrate all of the elements of the lesson. Please click the link in the description below and I'll be happy to send it over to you. If you are already a part of my virtual classroom, you can access the PDF from the free resources area. I wanted to start out by saying that I think what I'm going to show you today is a, a little bit unique in the world of first guitar lessons. Most guitar, you know, the first lesson starts out with you learning things in what we call first position or this this area right right in here and then it takes weeks months years and you kind of slowly work your way up the up the fretboard but i'm going to show you how to get around on your instrument from the get-go so we're, we're going to learn about conceptually what what is it that makes the guitar work the way it does What's this underlying logic to the, to the fretboard? And we're going to start out by first learning what are the names of the notes in music. And so you want to remember that there are 12 notes in music. There are 12 notes in music, just like a clock, just like the months of the year. And the notes go in order, starting from A, just like you would with a regular alphabet. Each letter is followed by the same letter, but with a sharp. So we start out with A, and then the next note is A sharp. Then we move to B. There are a few places, there are two places, where you move directly to the next alphabet letter. And B is one of those places. So instead of going from B to B sharp, you just go from B to C. So, so far we have A, A sharp, B, go to C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. E is the second note of two that don't move to, uh, or that doesn't move to A sharp. E goes directly to F. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and the twelfth note is G sharp, and then instead of going to H, we just start all over again and we go to what's called an octave A, and then it starts all over again, A, A sharp, B, C, etc., and we keep climbing that way. So in a, in a minute or two, we're going to realize that on the, on the guitar. But let's start out now by talking about the pick. And you'll notice that um, your pick has a tip and the two corners. So what you want to do is take the tip of the pick. You're going to use your, if you're right-handed, your right hand, you're going to put the pick underneath your thumb. And then your first finger comes up and kind of presses it up against the thumb so that it's held in place. And then you want to align the tip of the pick somewhat with the cuticle line of your, of your thumb. Let's see if I can get up there a little bit. Yeah, like that. One thing to be careful of is you, you don't want to pull back and hold your pick like that because it'll, it'll just fall out of your hand it'll you know it's too flimsy and another thing you want to be sure is to not use a pick that's too thin 
because you'll get a thin sound. It doesn't. It's kind of a flappy sound. So, you, you know, if you're buying a pick at a music store, make sure you get a medium pick. Uh, they have heavy picks as well, but you know, to start out, I would I would get a medium medium pick. So we're now holding the pick the proper way, and what we're going to do is take the pick and we're going to put it on top of the string that's closest to the ceiling. This would be the sixth string from the floor. And I'm resting on this string, ready to go. I'm going to follow through and we're going to do something called a rest stroke. The reason we call it a rest stroke is because once you follow through, you, you're, the next string is going to stop your pick and you're going to come to rest on that string. So it looks something like this. Now I'm resting on this string and I'm going to follow through with another rest stroke and so forth. Okay, so let's, let's try that together. So hold your pick, make sure it's in the proper position. Put it on top of the sixth string from the floor or the closest string to the ceiling. In a, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about the names of the strings and all that. But for right now, we're working on this picking technique. Okay, and follow through with your first rest stroke like this. Okay, now you're resting on the fifth string from the floor. And again, follow through to the fourth string. And then follow th through again. And again. And again. And then one more time. This can't be a rest stroke because there isn't another string. So you just kind of let it drop like that. Okay, so I'll do it and then you do it. Should sound like this. Okay, so try that out for a second. All right, sounds good. Okay, so now let's take the, uh, the pick again and we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to name the strings. We're gonna uh, figure out what the name of each string is, if you don't already. And I have a little story about this. I was teaching a class one time, many years ago, and we had a contest who could come up with some kind of a saying that each word represents, you know, would have the, the first letter of each word would represent the proper string name. So that was the assignment and the class came back the next week and uh, there was a, a girl in the class and she came up with this saying and I fell in love with it. I thought this is, this is great. And it goes like this, elephants and dogs grow big ears. So the string that's closest to the ceiling is the elephant string, Th then and dogs grow big ears. Elephants and dogs grow big ears. Okay, so if I were to ask you to play me the D string with a rest stroke, you just think, okay, elephants and dogs, that's the D string. And you put your pick over the D string and follow through with a rest stroke. And you're playing the D, D string. So those are the, the names of the strings. Uh, just for, for grins, let's do a little um, quiz here and let's say I asked you to play your B string, the B as in baby. See if you can figure out where that is. And if you ended up on the second string from the floor, then you got the right answer. That's the B, the B string. Okay, great. All right, so now we've learned the names of the strings. Let's talk about how do you get a good sounding note on the guitar. And we're going to go back to the A string, elephants and. And on the A string, we're going to put our first finger just behind this metal, what we call fret. And we're going to press down and we're going to press the string into the fret. 
and we get a nice sounding note. And I want to say at this point, the guitar is different than, let's say, a violin, because a violin doesn't have these metal frets. You're actually pressing your finger into the wood. On guitar, on a guitar, you're, you're pressing the string so that it rests against the, the metal fret. And so, in essence, what you're doing is shortening the string. When, when you press down on a note, the string is being heard from this metal fret to where it meets the, what's called the bridge up here. And as you move up, the notes get higher, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So again, let's take the first finger of the left hand, if you're right-handed, and we're going to put that on the first fret area or in the first fret area, just behind the metal, metal fret. Um, if you touch the metal, you might get this sound, kind of a buzzy sound. So if you're hearing that, pull back away from the metal fret and make sure your finger's in the proper place. I would say anywhere from about the middle of the fret up to just behind the metal is, is where your optimum note sound will be. Okay, so let's go ahead and play that note. Right now, slide your first finger to the next fret area, to the second fret area, and play that note. And keep going, third fret, fourth, fifth fret, the sixth fret, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then we get to the 12th fret. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the 12th fret is the one place where there's two dots or two fret markings on your fretboard. Every place else there's one dot, but here there's two. That's the 12th fret. And remember we were talking about there's 12 notes in music. So that's, that's where the note, the string name repeats itself, starts over again. In other words, we're, we were playing on the A string. So if I play the A string without any fingers, that's an A. And if I go to the 12th fret on that string where the two dots are, that also is an A. So practice that for a couple of couple of times play the open a and then what's called the octave a open 12th fret and that holds true for every string on the guitar this is an e this is an e octave a octave a d octave g octave b octave b E and the octave E. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind, you know, catalog it somewhere in your brain that the 12th fret is where the string name starts over again. And then in between, on every string, in between the open string and the 12th fret, those 12 notes that we talked about occur on every string. In other words, there's the note A, it's on this string, it's on this string, this string. I could take any note and find it on each string. All right, so let's move on now and let's go back and play the open A. And then we're gonna go to that first fret again and we're gonna name this note. Remember, A is followed by A sharp. Then that's followed by B. And remember, B moves directly to C, then C sharp, then D, coming into the sixth fret for D sharp, seventh fret is E, eighth fret is F, not E sharp, ninth fret is F sharp, then G at the tenth fret, 
G sharp at the 11th fret. And now we arrive at the 12th fret, the two dots, and we start back at the beginning, so to speak, but an octave higher, and this is called the octave A. All right, so when you get a chance, uh, part of the process that you wanna go through is testing yourself, see if you can climb up this string and name all the, all the notes of the, it's called the chromatic scale, chromatic, kind of a cool, Cool name, I like it. <laughs> the chromatic scale. Okay, so let's, um, let's move on now and we wanna talk about what is a half step and what is a whole step. And this holds true no matter what instrument you're playing, whether it's piano, trumpet, violin, guitar, trombone. We speak in half step and whole steps in music lingo. And so now what we're going to do is we're gonna isolate the B string, which is the second string from the floor. And we're gonna play the first note on the B string. I, I, I mean the first fret, sorry. First fret on the B string. This happens to be, the name of this note is C, and it's actually called middle C. One of the reasons it's called middle C is because if you were to sit at a piano and your chair was right in the center of the piano keyboard, the C note that's right in front of you is in the middle of the piano and it's called middle C. So this corresponds with that note. Okay, but for us, just remember this is, this is a C right here. All right, so now um, we're gonna talk about half steps and whole steps. And a half step is when you move by one fret, either up or down. I'm gonna shift over to this note over here for demonstration purposes. And we're going to play this note, or I'm going to play this note. And then I'm going to move a half step up. Then I'm gonna move back to the note I came from, and I'm going to move a half step down. So it's basically moving up or down one fret is a half step. And keep in mind that when we talk about moving on the guitar, that this way, going up like that, is moving up and when we go this way that's moving down and also when you play across the strings if you play towards the floor you're actually going up because we talk in terms of pitch you know higher notes lower notes so the notes get higher as you move towards the floor and lower as you move towards the ceiling so it, it's all counterintuitive, but it, it is what it is. So, you know, you just have to remember that we talk in terms of, of pitch. So when you play, or if I play this note, and I say go up a half step, it's this way. If I say go down a half step, it's that way. Okay? All right, cool. So now um, a whole step, a whole step is obviously two half steps. So that would be two frets on the guitar. If I said go up a whole step, you play this note, and then you go up two frets, and that's a whole step. Now I'm gonna go down a whole step to get back to where I started. And if I said go down a whole step, you would go back here from the fifth fret to the third fret. Half steps and whole steps. Okay, now we're gonna go back over to this middle C. And we're gonna do a little kind of a Simon Says or just kind of follow along with me. Um, so we're starting here on the note C, first fret, and I'd like you to go up a whole step. So you're gonna move up to the third fret and play that note. Now go up a whole step again. Now go up a half step. Now go up a whole step, go up another whole step, 
and then yet another whole step, and then a half step. So what we just did is a formula for what's called the major scale. You've heard it, it's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. All right, so if we go back to the first note, Together, we're going to play now what's called the major scale. And because we're starting on C, it's called the C major scale. So go ahead and play that C. Now go up a whole step to D, a whole step to E, a half step to F, a whole step to G, another whole step, to A, and yet another whole step. There's three whole steps in a row here. And then a half step to the octave. Okay, so here we go. First note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step and then a half step to the octave. I wanted to talk a little bit about the octave for a second here. I'm gonna go back to the A string. Here is my open A. And remember we go to the 12th fret to get the octave. I just wanted to point out that there are, there's a few songs that you probably know uh, that when you sing the song, the first two notes are an octave and an octave is relatively hard to sing because if you think about it you know your vocal cords have to stretch from this so you know songs like um, chestnuts roasting on an open fire right the first two notes octave Another song you might know is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Again, starts with an octave. So try singing that, it's, it's difficult. And the next time you hear somebody sing one of those songs, see how well they do going from the first note to the octave, because like I say, it's, it's difficult to sing. The really good singers will just nail it. The not so good singers, you hear them kind of stretch up into that, into that octave note. So, all right, so let's move on. What I'd like to do now is um, review the major scale. Starting on C. So again, memorize whole step, whole step, half whole step, whole step, whole step, half. Two whole steps, then a half. Three whole steps, and then a half. And we started on the note C, but you could start on any note. Like, um, I'll just randomly pick a note. Let's do um, E, the note E. And that note is on the D string, elephants and dogs. So we're gonna go to the second fret of the D string, right here. And that is an E, and we're gonna play an E major scale by going whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. First note is E, go up a whole step, go up another whole step, go up a half step, go up a whole step, go up a whole step, another whole step, and then a half step to the octave E. I'll play it and then you play it, okay? So it should sound like this. And remember, you start on the first note, which in this case is E. We're gonna play an E major scale and you take off with the whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So go ahead and try that at home as they, as, 
they like to say there and see if you can get the sound of the E major scale. I'll give you a second to do that. And now we're going to move into the last section of this lesson and we're going to learn a couple of chords. We're going to learn what's called a G chord and then a D7 chord. So a chord, what is a chord? A chord is, you know when you hear people strumming strumming their guitar and they're holding down a shape over here? Well, that shape is called a chord. It could be defined as playing more than one note at a time, two notes, three notes, four notes, five. In our case, because we have six strings, you could play six notes at the same time. So when you hear something like uh, this, I'm strumming, I'm drumming actually, but we'll say strumming. We're strumming on the, on the guitar while we're holding down a shape. The first chord we're gonna learn is called a G chord. And what we're gonna do is take the left hand and we're gonna identify the fingers as one, two, three, and four. If you were learning piano, the thumb would be one, this would be two, three, four, five. But typically you don't use the thumb to play <laughs> notes on the on the guitar. Although sometimes we wrap the thumb around and play a you know a note on the low E, we kind of sneak the thumb over like that. But basically we just use one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna take the third finger and we're gonna place the third finger on the third fret of the E string the one closest to the floor, and we're gonna get a nice sounding note. Then you wanna take your pick and get it ready for, uh, as if you were gonna do a rest stroke on the D string, we're gonna strum four strings. And just go ahead and follow through and brush the four strings that uh, the pick is gonna glide over like this. Make sure you've got a good sounding note up here, not Right, so, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to four. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to start uh, by strumming. Every time one comes around, you wanna strum your guitar. So I'll go one, two, three, four, and then on the next one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. I'll count to four and then we'll start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. All right, sounds great. Um, keep in mind, um, if we, if you look at the kind of the back of the guitar, let me see if I can get an angle here. Make sure that your thumb is not sticking out like that. It should be touching the, the back of your, the neck here of the guitar neck. So you don't want to just kind of randomly, you know, moving around here. You kind of plant it there, but not too hard. You want to, you know, you want to be able to kind of glide up and down the fretboard like that. So this chord here is called the simple G. There's a more advanced G. It's not that advanced, but uh, more advanced than this. And so what we're going to do is still use this note, but now we're going to take the second finger. We're going to keep this note down and we're going to put the second finger on the third fret area of the low E string, the one closest to the ceiling. And you might notice that your finger is touching the A string and muting it. And you, you want that. That's good. When you strum, you won't even hear that. Okay? So it should sound like this. All right. So same thing. I'm going to count to four and if you can play this chord, great. If not, just go back to playing the simple G. One, two, three, 
four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. Great. Now we're going to learn our second chord. And then at the end of this lesson, we're going to play a song. It's really fun because we have a play along that uh, that you can use and it kind of gives you the sense that you're playing along in the band. It's There's a play along track that goes along with it. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's learn this, this chord. And the name of this chord is D7. So it sounds like this. All right. And here's how you make that this D7 chord. So let's go back to the G chord first, the simple G. All right. And we're going to take this finger and we're going to slide it back like so. Remember, or down. Remember, it's that way. And we're now at the second fret area. Keep this note down. Then put your first finger on that middle C that we talked about, which is on the B string first fret. It's right there. Okay, so we have the second fret, the first fret with the first finger, and then the middle finger, the second finger, is going to go on the G string second fret. And you can see if you kind of connected the dots here, you have sort of what I would call a triangle shape. That's the D7. All right, so go back to the G. Slide back here. First finger, second finger. Okay, now check your notes. G string note sounds good. The note on the B string sounds good. The note on the high E string sounds good. And now we're going to strum five strings like this. Now move back to the G and strum four strings. Okay, so uh, one thing about chords that I wanted to, to mention is that in the beginning when you're making your chords, you're probably going to put them together one, one finger at a time. This finger goes here, this goes here, this goes here. But eventually you have to think of it as, it's like plugging a lamp uh, you know, into, the, into the wall socket. The, uh, the, the prongs go in. So think of your fingers as prongs and you're plugging in the lamp, so to speak. Instead of one finger at a time, it's like the whole shape goes in at the same, same time. There's something called muscle memory, uh, which develops that. And one uh, way that I think is good to develop your muscle memory is to look at the chord, you know, grab it any way you can. You get, get the shape together. Then you squeeze your thumb and your fingers together. So you're almost making the impression of the string in your fingers and you squeeze it. Now we're going to let go and we're going to put the hand on your knee you know, pull away from the guitar. Think about that shape. And as you bring your hand up, think about that shape and plug in the shape. In the beginning, again, if you need to go one finger at a time, that's okay. But eventually you need to plug the lamp in, so to, so to speak. It goes right into that socket like that. And that's true with all, all of your chords. So if, again, if you're learning a new chord, do the muscle memory thing a couple of times and it'll get better and better. Because remember, you have to switch. You're gonna be on one chord and you have to keep the time going and switch to the next chord. So you really don't have a lot of time to go finger, finger, finger. Um, and it just, you know, it sounds better. There's more flow if you can plug into the, into the chord. All right, so here we are, we're on this G chord. Or, if you like, use the big G. Pull back here, put in the rest of the chord. We have the D7, and then we go back to the G chord by lifting these two away, sliding up, and going back to whichever G chord you're going to be using. 
Okay, so I'm going to count to four. We're going to strum um, on one. We're going to do two measures of music. A measure of music is counting to four. One, two, three, four, and then we start again. One, two, three, four. Every time one comes around, you're going to strum. So we're going to do two measures or two times on the one on the G. Then we're going to switch to D7. We're going to do two measures of D7. And then we're going to come back to the G chord for two measures. Okay, so here we go. I'll count to four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two. Now switch. Three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two. Switch back. Four. And one, two, three, four. And one. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And 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 one, two, three, four. Four. Excellent. We're now going to move into playing your first song, which is Jambalaya. It's a song called Jambalaya, and it was written by Hank Williams. Um, you should know who Hank Williams is. He was an American treasure, great songwriter. And if you get a chance, go ahead and research Hank Williams and listen to you know YouTube or listen to some of uh, Hank Williams songs. They're, they're great. They're not too hard to play. Um, it'd be a good place to start to, you know, if you want to learn some, some songs right off the bat. Most of his songs have two or three, so two or three chords in them and the lyrics are great. <laughs> so that's Hank Williams. All right. So jambalaya, uh, jambalaya works like this. Um, we're going to use the G chord and the D seven chord, but it's going to um, it's going to work like this. You're going to have two measures of G, and then two measures of D7. Then it flip flops. You're going to have two measures of D7 and two measures of G. So I'll demonstrate that. It would sound like this: one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Switch. One, two, three, four. One. Two, three. Now start on the D7. Just stay here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one. After we get into the groove, you know, or you kind of get your chords together, then we can get into strumming. But uh, I thought I'd, I'll just demonstrate this with strumming, just so you can see what the what the chord progression sounds like. It's like this. One. Two, three, four. And I switch. Stay here. Two, let's do it again. All right, so for today, though, we're just going to strum on one. Okay, so here we go. This is Jambalaya by Hank Williams. I'll count to four. Why do I count to four? Because that's called the tempo of the song. If I count, you know, it gives you the speed of the song. It's called the tempo. So if I go one, two, three, four, the song is going to go one, two, three, four. If I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so... It's called four for nothing. The number four and then F-O-R, four for nothing, is what we call the, the count off bar. Okay, so here we go, four for nothing. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, switch. And one, two, three. 
three, four, and one, two, 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 three, four, and one. Let's go around again. Begin. One, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. All right, one more time. This time I'm going to strum, but you continue to play on one. Uh, on one. One, two, three, four, and one. And one, two, three, switch. And one. And one. Switch. One, two, three, four, and one. Now you can shift over into the jambalaya section, the play along. Like I say, it's going to be really fun because you'll feel like you're playing along or jamming with the band. All right, guys. Good first lesson. Um, I think we learned a lot. And like, like I said, the purpose of the lesson is really just to get you acclimated and you know, conceptually understand how the how the guitar works and how music works, really. So thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. And please, if you haven't done so already, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos.